Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Capricorn for May 2016. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see what's up with my blog. I always have new blog posts on there, and you can also sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community. So what's going on in May? We've got some surprising, beautiful, awesome transits bringing huge blessings. It's I say it's surprising because it's right in the middle of this um, experience of this wall of retrograde. You know, if you've ever watched um, a movie that has a big storm at sea and there's just this massive wave that's just like towering over any ships there and it's just like so big. That's what I think of when I think of this wall of retrograde because Mars is retrograde that started April 17th, goes through June 29th. Mercury is retrograde that started April 28th, goes, goes through May 22nd. Of course, there are shadow periods on either end of those uh, periods. But in the midst of this energy going backwards, we have a massive amount of sweet angles, mostly trines, in the month of May bringing blessings. And we have Jupiter, the great benefic, the expander, the bringer of growth and optimism and enthusiasm and luck, waking up from its slumber. Wherever Jupiter is, it expands everything it touches. Most of the time, Jupiter will bring very obvious blessings, expansion, growth, luck, benevolence. But sometimes Jupiter brings an expansion of problems so that you can make that area of your life better by resolving problems that are long-standing problems. So for early degree placements, and that's, that's basically the December born up until like January 1st born caps or from zero to nine degrees if you're watching for your rising sign. You all have had Jupiter in your ninth house. And the ninth house is the house of teaching and learning in different countries and different cultures, publishing, religion, um, churches, spirituality. It's the house of publishing, writing, speaking, things like that. The rest of you, so basically most of the um, January born Capricorns, you have had Jupiter in the eighth house and the eighth house has to do with other people's money also has to do with deep intimate relationship and relationship with resources where you're merging partnering with people where you are uh, merging ideas and collaborating it's also called other people's money where you are getting funding from somewhere or if you are um, it's like spousal money uh, sweepstakes inheritances debt credit um, venture capital money anything where it's money coming from somewhere else or money resources that you merge. And also this is the house of deep esoteric studies and deep intimate relationships, including marriage. And some legal things are there as well. So the early degree placements have that Jupiter in the ninth house. The rest of you have Jupiter in the eighth house. And you might have seen things starting to move forward last year, like the second part of the year, you know, the end of summer or I guess depending on where you are in the world, we'll say around August through the end of the year, expansion was happening, momentum was happening. Then in the beginning of January, it went away. And it seems like, whoa, where is Jupiter? Where is Jupiter's blessings? Everything's going awry, everything's going backwards. But in May, May 9th, Jupiter wakes back up. So when Jupiter wakes back up, all of those things that he was working on for you in those fields of experience, depending on where your placements are, will start to have life breathed back into them. But this process now is going back over things in order to push forward with those blessings in May. So it's an interesting period of time because so many things are still going backwards, but yet Jupiter is starting to wake up and Jupiter is bigger and has a longer orbit than Mars or Mercury. So in some ways it trumps those transits, but what goes on with Mars and Mercury is still going to be relevant. So I'm not going into tremendous detail about what happens with Mercury retrograde and Mars retrograde. I highly recommend that you um, do a search for Annie Botticelli YouTube Mars retrograde, or just search on my channel for Mars retrograde and also go to my uh, website, AnnieHelpsYou.com and read the blog if you like it in a, a written version. Eventually, I'll have the um, Mercury retrograde in a blog, too. 
I'm not sure if it'll be by the time I post this, but you can keep checking back. And then also check out my Mercury retrograde video because there are so many do's and don'ts and caveats and things to know about these transits while you're getting these new blessings coming in. So things you worked on in the past, seeds you planted in the past when Jupiter wakes up in May and all these trines are occurring, it's like things are going to be handed to you, offered to you, but you don't have the whole picture. There might be deception, intentional withholding. There might be um, just information that hasn't come out yet because you said yes too quickly. You have, you're in danger of saying yes too quickly to the things that come to you because they might be so exciting that you say, yes, please, just I'll take that. I'll take it, yes. But you don't know all the ins and outs, and that's one of the, the problems with negotiating or saying yes to something when you have Mars and Mercury retrograde is that you don't really have the whole picture or the whole oomph of forward movement. So just carefully try to draw out as long as possible to, you know, into July even if possible. You want to at least wait till Mercury gets um, more clear, which is after June 8th. But if you, depending on what it is, you might also want to try to bridge the negotiations into July when at least Mars will be direct and you'll, you'll have a clearer picture of what is being offered to you. So we've got this um, strong short-term energy for Capricorns in the fourth house. When we say short-term, we're talking about planets that move really quickly. When we look at a horoscope chart, there are planets like the Sun and the New Moon and the Full Moon and Mercury and Mars and Venus that move more quickly. And then we have the planets, the outer planets, you know, like Jupiter and Chiron, if you follow that asteroid, and Neptune and Uranus and Pluto, etc., that move more slowly. And those planets, the outer planets, are somewhere for a long time. So they're telling a story about this theme that's going on in some area of your life. The shorter term planets are just what's new, what's different this month or this several weeks. You know, and so it's, it's very easy to talk about those short-term transits. And for Capricorn, that's occurring in the fourth house. Every Capricorn placement has some sort of busyness in their fourth house. Fourth house is the house of home, is the house of family, is the house of childhood. Also could be the house of um, your parents if you don't live with them or really any other family member. Your family, your household, real estate ventures, your home buying or selling property. Um, design projects, anything that has to do with working inside someone's home construction, etc. So you might be getting very antsy to move or you might be getting very excited to work on your house or you there's just something where your attention is being brought home, whatever that looks like and that can look many different ways. But there's a big story about that in um, May for all Capricorns. Now the longer term transits, the early degree placements, so like the December born Capricorns or the zero to nine or 10 degrees, um, if you're looking for your rising sign, you all have had Neptune, the South Node and Chiron in your third house as a long-term transit. The rest of you placements, your pla um, Capricorn placements, have all those planets in your second house. So for the earlier placements, you have this karma, this, victim, this deep victimhood and this spiritualizing process occurring as it relates to your communication patterns, how you communicate with people and how you transport yourself, your mobility. This is a really important process because everyone always communicates with people how they want to be communicated with. And you can see when you look at astrological charts, how, like if you're looking at synastries or between parents and kids or partners or whatever, that where someone's mercury is, is how they communicate. And that blends really well with, with the same or similar placements in synastry. But then there are placements that don't really jive. And you can see those naturally flowing places and the places that don't really jive. So we're always running this circuit of communicating in the way we want to be communicated with. So when you've got this long-term story of communication, which is happening for early degree caps, it's like 
you have an opportunity, it might not be welcome opportunity, but it's an opportunity nonetheless to really refine how you're communicating with people. If you can figure out more about how you communicate, you can do this by getting a free chart online and looking at the house and the sign of Mercury and then reading about how those people tend to um, communicate. And you can see also afflictions, and maybe this is more complicated, but aspects to that Mercury where someone, maybe they had Mercury retrograde when they were born and they're a little bit backwards with communication or, you know, there, there's, there are problems with communication that run rampant in society. And when you have this transit going on, it's telling a story about how your life could be so much better if you would shift how you communicated. For the rest of the placements, there's this like middle to, to um, end of the sign. Um, so basically all January born caps or from like 10 to 29 degrees. All this energy, this karma, this um, you know woundedness is happening in your house of finances. How you make money, how you support yourself, how you take care of yourself and other people. So there's a lot of karma. There's a lot of um, victim energy, you know, of like, I'm just trying to make money, but I can't because I'm sick or there's a problem with my employer or, you know, all the different ways that we could feel victimized with how we make money, that is coming up for many Capricorns. And it's not coming up to torture you, it's coming up to help you heal it. We live in a holographic reality, which means that everything inside of us is projected outside into the external experience for us to have come to us as reflections so we can better see it. We can't really see inside very well, but we can see outside very well. And when you can see outside, then your, your, the patterns of your life are what you have inside. So if you have these stories of karma or feeling victimized with how you're making money or you know scarcity issues or anything having to do with that, this is a chance for you to turn that energy inward instead of continuing to focus on I'm in a bad situation because this person. I'm in a bad situation because that person. I'm in a bad situation because that happened to me. You know, so every person has the opportunity in this lifetime to decide that they are going to roll with the truth that you can change the nature of your reality by changing what's inside of you. If you continue blaming people outside of your circumstances, you're going to have a very low quality of experience and you're not going to have all of the magic that could be part of your life experience there. So this is what's happening in this longer term picture. So at the same time, we have Pluto, and this is most active for birthdays with uh, in 2016, like January 3rd through 9th, or uh, rising degrees like 14th through 19 degrees. Pluto is either sitting on your ascendant or sitting on your sun. This is no joke. This is major alchemy at work here. Pluto is the energy of the atomic bomb. It blows stuff up. Um, literally, figuratively, it's that energy of, of the phoenix rising from the ashes and certain aspects of life dying so that new aspects can come in. When you have Pluto moving along your ascendant or uh, planet like the sun, or if you have a bunch of planets in Capricorn or in, in Sag even, you've spent years with Pluto going over these. That's my life has been almost one huge Pluto transit because I have so many placements in Sagittarius and Capricorn that ever since I can remember, I've had Pluto sitting on top of something in my chart of major consequence. So I understand when you're experiencing this, it's like everything's blowing up around you. There's like landmines and you're like, okay, what's going to blow up next? But there again is this major chance for transformation that's lying within that so that you can take accountability for the quality of your experience and you can radically change your life. So it's intense. There's a lot going on, but it's rich with massive potential. And then in May specifically, I mean, we were talking about long-term um, transits that are kind of working on you over time. But in May, you've got Sun trine Jupiter on May 3rd, Sun trine Pluto on May 7th, the new moon in Taurus on May 6th. You've got Jupiter going direct on May 9th. You know, there's um, Mercury trying Pluto on uh, the end of the month. So there's just like all of this beautiful support that's being given to you 
And so hopefully it will um, help to lift your spirits. But at the same time, we always have to remember that when we're looking to something outside of ourselves to make us happy, we're always eventually going to wind up not happy because things are always changing and nothing is really permanent in these tangible realms, you know? So the, the deeper lessons are coming from placing your certainty within yourself and your connection with the divine so that um, you can be happy regardless of what's going on. So if you need some assistance with that, check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. I have many resources that I've put together to facilitate this process from having so much of a Pluto transit my whole life. I have um, learned some things about how you can use this energy, and I want to share that with you. So check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Check out my personal coaching, my blogs, my Train Your Brain programs. And while you're there, definitely sign up for my free email newsletter. I do a write-up every month for the upcoming month with some more specific details that I don't always go over in the horoscopes for the month ahead. And I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye.